Now, firstly, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a question which causes considerable issues for many people studying ordinary level maths. So the question is straightforward. It's solve 2x minus 1 over 3 plus x minus 4 over 2 equals 3. So obviously what we have here is a linear equation which involves fractions, and fractions are the issue which cause so many problems. Now, first of all, my initial target is to try to remove fractions. So to begin with, I'm going to look at this number here, 3, and this number here, 2. In other words, we look at the denominators of the fractions, the numbers on the bottom in the different parts. Now, first thing that enters my mind is, what is the smallest number? that both of these numbers divide evenly into. It's known as the LCM. Now, the smallest number that both 3 and 2 divide evenly into is quite obviously 6. Okay? Now what we do to remove fractions is we simply rewrite the question, but every part on top we multiply it by 6. Okay? So we, as I said, we simply rewrite the question. We have 6 multiplied by 2x minus 1 divided by 3 plus 6 multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 2. And be very careful, um, you must not forget to multiply the right-hand side by 6 as well. So all we've done is rewrite the question, except everywhere on top we've put 6. Okay. Now in the next line, our fractions are going to be removed. So if you look carefully at this. We have a 6 on the top here, and we have a 3 on the bottom here. Now, obviously, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the first section becomes 2 multiplied by 2x minus 1. In the next section, we have, again, a 6 on the top, and we have a 2 on the bottom. And quite obviously, if we divide, 6 divided by 2 is plus 3. So that's plus 3 times x minus 4 equals 6 multiplied by 3, 18. And there we go. All fractions have been removed. So now the question has become considerably easier. In the next step, we simply multiply at the left-hand side, the brackets on the left, and start our tidy-up process. So to begin with, 2 multiplied by 2x is 4x. 2 multiplied by minus 1 is minus 2, just be very careful with the signs, plus 3 multiplied by x is plus 3x, and plus 3 multiplied by minus 4 is minus 12, and on the right hand side nothing changes, minus 18. In the next line we continue tidying up and we simply put x's with x's and numbers with numbers. So 4x plus 3x is going to give me 7x and minus 2 minus 12 gives me minus 14. So 7x minus 14 equals 18. Okay? Now, next thing that we try to do is we try to get x's on one side of the equal sign and numbers on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that minus 14 across over here. Now, fundamental rule in maths is that if you move something across an equal sign, you replace it with its opposite. And obviously the opposite of subtracting is adding. So when minus 14 goes across the equal sign, we obtain 7x equals 18 plus 14. Okay, so again, if you move something across an equal sign, you replace it with its opposite. And as I said, the opposite of subtraction is addition. Now if we add the 18 and the 14, we get 32, okay? And then finally, our final target is to remove the 7 from the left. So what we need to think about is what's happening to the 7 and the x. And quite clearly, 7 is being multiplied by x. Now again, as I said a few minutes ago, if you move something across an equal sign, you replace it with its opposite. The opposite of multiplication is division, so we obtain x equals 32 divided by 7. Because, as I said, the opposite of multiplying by 7 is dividing by 7. So, again, the question has turned out to be quite straightforward. The most important thing is at the beginning, 
how we obtained the LCM. The LCM is the smallest number that everything on the bottom line divides evenly into. And we have 3 here and 2 here. The smallest thing that they divide into evenly is 6. Then in the next line, we rewrote the question, multiplied every part on top by 6. So we have 6 there, 6 there, and 6 there. Okay. On the next line then, we did our cancellation. And once we had removed fractions, from that point on, we were simply trying to put x's together, numbers together, get x's on one side of the equal sign, and numbers on the other side. And then, very last step, when we obtained 7x equals 32, we asked ourselves, what is the opposite of multiplying by 7? And the opposite of multiplying by 7 is, quite obviously, dividing by 7. So the answer is x equals 32 over 7.